Hi, I'm Ed Mays uh, with Pirate TV, and um, after doing a TV show for 25 years, I finally ended my relationship with Free Speech TV last month. So I realized that I'm free, so I decided to sign on as a crew member with the Golden Rule Project of the Veterans for Peace and I'm going to be doing their video work for two months. I'm here with Jan Passion, skipper for yesterday and today. And uh, so we had quite an adventure yesterday. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. We um, uh, left in a fairly strong forecast that got even stronger. And um, so we had some serious waves and some serious wind. And we did have uh, several hours of beautiful sailing with sunshine and a uh, wind behind us. Um, but then the wind uh, shifted to the northwest. And uh, at one point we had a really strong gust, 40 miles an hour, probably higher. And um, it flipped over the dinghy and that made for a little more adventure than we signed up for. We ended up finding this place to birth here that's in a Marine Corps uh, uh, facilities. Marine Corps Marina, Quantico. So anyway, so I understand that you're the original skipper of the Golden Rule after the Veterans for Peace restored the boat. Right. Can you tell us how you got hooked up with uh, this project? What motivated you? Uh, the Golden Rule is a perfect intersection of my passion for sailing and my past passion for a peaceful world. So I've been an activist for 40 years and um, just uh, it was a great, great coming together of uh, a boat that's promoting a nuclear free future and has a really remarkable and storied history and I was delighted to sort of bring my two loves together. So it's going to be you and the project manager, uh, Helen, uh, Jack Hart. Yeah, Jack Hart. And so uh, today, so uh, we're, we're, heading, we're trying to make it towards Alexandria, Virginia, right? I'm hopeful that we will. Um, the forecast today is much more uh, mellow, 10 to 15 with gusts to 20. Um, but that should be pretty doable and it's about 25 miles away, so that should take us for f five or six hours, something like that. Great. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Here on here, we're about fourth or fifth on the list. Oh, and, uh, and had had his questions about it, and found out about the FD and joined immediately, and got super active, and was thrilled about the Golden Rule, and nailed down our first event. Thank you uh, for coming. Uh, I'm Pat Elder, and uh, I'm honored to have um, had a, a, a role to play. Um, you know, and, and um, I, um, you know, I ask God, um, as I understand Him, Her, and as you may understand Him or Her, to help us stop a nuclear war. Come on, this is why we're here. This is why we're doing this. This is what the Golden Rule is all about. Those crew members in 1958 were ready to sail right into danger in the Marshall Islands. And they were stopped and they were arrested. And we are their legacy. And all of us have, have, have imagined that, that horrible mushroom cloud, that, that orange cloud uptown, destroying the city we love. We've, we're all there. And we want to stop that from happening. And this is about the best we could do. We are the resistance. And so you know what? There's hope. That's Man, right. there's hope in resistance. That's right. So I am honored. And uh, we have a little program. It's not going to be real long. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Art Laffin. And Art's going to um, say a prayer, a kind of benediction. And then Art's going to hand it over to Julie Tyak Yates. Julie Tyak Yates is the daughter of Turkey Tyak, who was uh, the, um, the chief of the Piscataway tribe. And that makes uh, Julie uh, the matriarch of the Piscataway nation. So 
uh, I think we're honored to have um, her here. And then um, afterward, uh, we will have uh, uh, the singers and uh, let's see, the, the, the Buddhist folks. And then we'll have, uh, uh, let's see, what's the name of, of your group, Black Lucy? Say that again. Black Workers Center Chorus. Black Workers Center Chorus. Center Chorus. Very cool. Um, and then um, I think that's it. And then we'll hand it off to Helen. And Helen can tell us about, you know, the mission of the, of the Golden Rule and what they've been through and what it's taken to get here. And then we'll also meet uh, um, some of the folks with the, uh, with the boat. So uh, let me hand it over to Art right now. Well, <clears throat> greetings of love to everybody here. It's, a, it's an honor to be in your presence today. And I would like to begin by giving thanks to our Creator God for the miracle of this day, for the precious miracle of life that we are participating in. Oh, Great Spirit, Earth, Sun, Sky, and Sea, you are inside and all around me. Try it. Oh, Great Spirit, Earth, Sun, Sky, and Sea, you are inside and all around me. I'm deeply honored to be part of this special gathering today as we Welcome uh, the Golden Rule Peace Crew. And as we gather, we are especially mindful that we are on sacred land first inhabited by indigenous peoples and then stolen by colonizers. We are deeply, deeply honored to be in the presence of our Piscataway sister, Julie Tayak Yates, the matriarch of Piscataways. We offer a special prayer of gratitude for and call into our presence the spirit of Chief Turkey Tayak, Julie's father, and all the indigenous and Piscataway ancestors who have died, including my friend, Julie's half-brother, Billy Tayak, who acted in solidarity with Catholic workers and other peace and justice makers in 1992 in D.C. to renounce 500 years of genocide and conquest of the Americas. For those of us from the Catholic and Christian tradition, today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week when we commemorate the passion and crucifixion of the nonviolent Jesus. We call the spirit of Jesus into our presence today. We acknowledge before our creator the role colonizers played in the conquest and genocide against Indian peoples. We acknowledge that the origins of the United States are blood-stained, replete with unspeakable racist crimes committed by white supremacists against our American Indian sisters and brothers for over 500 years and which continue up to the present day. Creator, for those of us who are white North Americans, we acknowledge this tragic history and how we have benefited from this legacy. We beg forgiveness for these sins and call for reparations to be made to all American Indians and their human rights and treaties be upheld and respected. Although it has taken way too long we are grateful that the Vatican just recently finally, finally repudiated the doctrine of discovery. <laughs> I would now like to invite anyone who feels moved to briefly invoke the names of other people we want to call into our presence today and remember them and possibly, you know, a very short concern. Please. I'll call out uh, Father Andrew White, who was a Jesuit and came to the spot in um, 1634. He wasn't about pillage. He wasn't about violence. He was about getting along. And 
he brought a lot of Piscataway into the Catholic faith, and Julie, of course, can attest to that. Um, Julie's dad was a Catholic, and uh, many of the, of the Piscataways from this area um, were Catholic. Go ahead, take it. Does anybody else want to offer, <coughs> invoke somebody, or? I, I would like concern? to invoke my grandmother, living, uh, one living grandmother. I'm, um, uh, I reconnected with her, and she is uh, always a land keeper. She um, farms, and I think that a farmer community um, definitely needs deep acknowledgement globally for sustaining our, our bodies and our minds. Yes. Thank you. I want to hold up my beloved husband, Larry Egbert, <coughs> who fought nuclear <coughs> weapons all his life with positions for social responsibility in lots of other organizations. Mm. Sister Artis Platty and Father mm. Philip Berrigan. Presente. Yes. Stand up. Um, my best friend, Rachel Saradsky, um, she was a deeply observant Jewish person and fought for peace um, until her dying breath. I'd like to mention Kevin Zeiss. Dr. Martin Luther King, yeah. who was assassinated 1968, April 4th. The anniversary will be Tuesday. Who is now um, being mischaracterized as all kind of things, but when he died, he had many enemies because he stood up against the Vietnam War. Yep, yes, he did. I wanted to mention Kevin Zeese, who we were remembering last week, who started the Venezuela Protection Group and many others. And also want to mention Daniel Ellsberg, who will soon be with the ancestors, who's done so much on this issue. Thank you. <laughs> I want to bring to the circle my grandfather Jonah who was just passed away and he raised me with a dream a dream that was uprooted in 1948 when he was kicked out of his land at the hands of the Jewish gangsters I want to promise and renew the covenant with my grandfather that he has a grandson that will continue the fight and will take all people to the promised land. Well, we, we, we remember all these people and we also... Go, go ahead, brother. Well, my brother Gary, <coughs> during the Vietnam War, was a soldier and he and a buddy rescued 50 Vietnamese told them, no, no, they're, they're coming to kill. Get out of here and got them out of there. Yeah. Say 50 Vietnamese. Yeah. So we, we bring together all these people, all our ancestors, uh, as, we, as we gather here. And uh, Ju Julie requested that we, 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 we end this part with a, with a prayer that was very special to her father and very central to the, uh, the Christian tradition. And it's the, Lord, the Lord's Prayer. So we invite you to please join with us if you, uh, in any way that you want, to offer this prayer. Our, Our Father, Father and Mother, who art in heaven, heaven. holy Father, be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, Julie. Now we're going to do a land acknowledgement. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Welcome. It's a beautiful day today, especially on uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, uh, the sun is shining. Uh, Mother Earth gave us a beautiful day. Um, my name is Julie Tyak Yates. I'm the matriarch of the Piscataway Indian Nation. 
I would like to welcome everyone that came here to hear my story. Uh, the Golden Rule, uh, the Peacemakers, Pat Elder, who I've become friends with in the past several months, and several other people, uh, Tara, Helen, and all others that, that I can't remember sometimes their names. Helen over there, um, my beautiful friend, Wara, and um, so many others. But thank you for coming today to hear my hear my story and for the land acknowledgement. I will start saying uh, this land belongs to the native people. It's welcome to America. You're on Indian land. This soil and the ground is the is the is is the ancestors, my ancestors, the people that walked on this land. But maybe to my knowledge, I can go back 400 years, but they were here way before 400 years, probably thousands of years. The Potomac River, the Anacostia River, flows into the blood of my people. That river fed my people. The Nakach tanks came from the word Anacostia. The Potomac River came from the native people, the Potomacs. Our affiliated tribes all lived all throughout this part of Virginia, Maryland, D.C., on up into uh, the Point of Rocks, all into New York and into the state of um, the, the um, country of Canada, the Mohawks, which were also part of the Algonquin-speaking people. Our language is Algonquin. The word home is Algonquin. It means bread. I want to talk about uh, my father, the late Chief Turkey Tayak. My father's buried in Piscataway Park, which is located in east, um, in uh, off of Indian Head Highway. <laughs> Two miles away. <laughs> Two miles away, across the Potomac River. <clears throat> his his gravesite lays along the beautiful shores of the Potomac River. I was born in 1951, August the 14th, 1951, in St. Mary's County. Pat talked about Father White. Father White was a Jesuit priest. He came on the Ark and the Dove, like he's sailing with the peacemakers today, uh, and on that uh, those two ships, the Ark and the Duff, were uh, noblemen. A lot of the counties in Maryland are named after those, I don't want to say the word, those noblemen. Calvert, <laughs> Cecil, all of those counties. Leonardtown, where I was actually born in Leonardtown, St. Mary's County. My father, a very, very prominent man. He was very knowledgeable in anything that had to do with the, our surrounding rivers, the Potomac, the Anacostia, uh, which flows down all the way down into the Chesapeake Bay. And that was our food. Had cooked oysters today. Farm raised. Farm raised oysters. <laughs> and, and because of, of the fact that he wanted to have food that we lived off of, out of the water, these waters. Today, the Anacostia River at one time is where, when I lived in the city with my father, we would go fishing at the Anacostia River and the water was clear, it was plentiful. You could, you could fish, I mean, you could stay during spawning time, fishing time about this time, and that's when the shad and the herring would run. Today, those waters are polluted. I, I love to fish. I don't even want to take fish out that water. I don't, I don't like to see people fishing out of that water. When I was coming here, I saw people fishing. The fish have too much mercury. You can't eat them. It's, it's very sad to my heart. I talked about this with the DC Council. 
and I passed the bill. I started the bill about two and a half years ago to give back our 1666 treaty. And our 66, 1666 treaty was to give us back our fishing and hunting rights without charging us. Would we, why? They took our land. We had no choice. We had no choice because the Susquehannocks were a larger tribe that moved in on us. And the white man, he brought ammunition. We didn't know what ammunition was, but we did know it could kill us, but they didn't kill us all. We gave in. We gave in and we gave up the land. There's no place on this planet in my heart and probably Pat's or anyone else that's ever been on the Chesapeake Bay in Southern Maryland that is more beautiful to see than that water. Thank you. You want me to finish? I had no. five minutes. <laughs> Am I done? Well, you can keep going. <laughs> I just wanted to say um, everyone's welcome uh, to contact me if you would like me to escort you to Piscataway Park and um, see our beautiful side of that um, river where the. It, it, actually, which direction? Let's see. Mount Vernon is right here, right? There's the river. So if you're where my father's gravesite is along the shore, if you're if you're right there and you look across the river, you can actually see Mount Vernon. That away. That away. So it's a pleasure um, to have you all here today and listen to my stories. I could go on and on and on and on, but I did ask and thank you so much, Father. Um, I brought some historical photos and uh, I thought we could do a round table. I'll sit and I'll go through everything and, uh, and you can see what it was like about the time I was born. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. No, we everybody. love you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next, uh, I would like to bring up uh, the monks and the lay people of uh, oh, Nipazan Mayo Hoji. Please. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. We're very honored to be here, be part of this program this afternoon. For 21 years, we have been walking a walk called Walk for a New Spring. We've been walking, we're based out of uh, Leverett, Massachusetts, a small town on the uh, Connecticut River near Amherst, Massachusetts, many people are familiar with. But this walk has been about the abolishment, the abolishing of nuclear weapons, the renouncing of war, and the making of peace, building a sustainable world. This year, our walk happened to connect or, you know, be synchronous with your, out, your program here, and so we were invited, and we would like to share our Buddhist prayer.
Well, to explain what that means, very simply, and very, it, it's calling on the essence, the great spirit. It's within us, all around us, in the sky, in the sun, in the stars, in the grass, in the wind, in the water, all the, and all the uni universe, calling upon the harmony and divinity of all that. We just really want to profoundly appreciate and honor the commitment of you all to resurrect the golden rule, <coughs> the golden rule, yes. and this particular vote named the golden rule, <laughs> and you know, your spirit that yes, we have to prevail over this uh, nuclear nightmare and war itself. Anyway, thank you, and thank you so much, uh, Julie Taya, for the welcome to us. Uh, thank you, that meant so much, and Art Laffin, thank you so much for your words and prayer. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call up the uh, uh, Black Workers uh, Center Chorus, and um, we heard them a little bit earlier. It's, it's incredibly moving. We acknowledge the uh, war on Black America, and we are going to sing the Black National Anthem, and we invite those of you as you are able to stand. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony Tuxet River Waterkeeper. And Fred has been doing remarkable work documenting the contamination hey, of the Patuxent River. It's sad to see. Fred, take it away. Well, thank you. I'll be very brief. I didn't come prepared, but I will speak from the heart. First of all, I want to thank Pat Elder for inviting me. I was taught to respect my elders, and so, of course, I came a running. <laughs> gorgeous to be out here where the grass is green, the sky is blue. But I must say, I've been a river keeper now for 20 years. I'm an elder too now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And Woo! wow, you know, when I was a kid, this was a very dangerous world and it is even more so now. The folly of humans have shredded this planet and I'm not convinced that we're going to fix these problems in my lifetime, perhaps yours, but I will say that our job is as much as anything to keep the pilot light on, which is what has been the game on the Patuxent for over 60 years. Folks have been fighting 
to get this river brought back to health as long as I've been above ground. And today, I'm here to tell you, there's not even a game plan for that, right? The game plan is you and me. So I want to thank you for both your peaceful activism, which is of course how we roll, right? We're not at war, we are activists. And we're here to preserve the peace in a situation where, like I said, we have so much, so much that must be done. So we have to bring up behind us, I look around and I see people in my generation and older, to bring up that leadership, to keep that pilot light on in a way that will keep these fights, these struggles from going on in the face of an environmental movement that would much rather get funded than fight. Yeah. Right? Ooh. Much rather preserve its career interests yeah. than do Ouch. what's right for the planet. Justice for people and the planet. You know, people and communities and for the planet. So. We've got our work cut out for us, and I want to thank you for turning out and doing what you do. And that's really all I came to say. So thank you. Wow, Fred. Thank you, Fred. And River thanks you. <laughs> hey, thank you, River. Thank you, River. So next I'd like to uh, bring up uh, Falabi <coughs> Olagbaju. And Falabi is, um, I don't know your title, Greenpeace. Falabi, what is it? Uh, I'm with Greenpeace. No. He's with Greenpeace. You want to bring up anybody else with Greenpeace? <laughs> so Falabi's going to say a few words uh, to talk about uh, their perspective on this uh, deteriorating environment. Mm -hmm. Take it away. Thank you, Pat. Uh, thank you all. So, ha so happy to be here. Uh, of course, want to always give honor and respect to the indigenous uh, first people of this land. Um, all this honor your history and legacy and uh, want to make sure that we continue that legacy of you know living for the seventh generation and that is what it's all about uh, making sure that we leave this planet a better place than we meet it uh, it's a really challenge for us um, and uh, i bring greetings from greenpeace uh, we definitely uh, have a history that links to the golden rule uh, it was a precursor to everything that uh, greenpeace does uh, they were doing the work uh, before uh, we ever began you know, uh, doing the work and uh, we hold uh, our legacy to them. I want to honor that. We are happy to be part of the uh, legacy, the honor that we are having with Golden Rule uh, this week. Uh, we, of course, uh, we, uh, with Greenpeace, we really fight for uh, a, a better, uh, more peaceful, more just world. Uh, we can do it by ourselves. We always do it with uh, our colleagues, allies uh, in the movement. Uh, we are very uh, committed to uh, seeing a fossil fuel, fossil fuel free world. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure we keep it in the ground. You know, uh, <laughs> we are committed for it yes. for the long haul. You know, uh, we are committed to people. You know, uh, it's about, all about people. Uh, you see us a lot with uh, polar bears and with dolphins and all that stuff. But in the, in the end of it, it's about people. You know, uh, without people, you know, nobody's going to be able to enjoy it. And we need, we need to preserve the uh, planet uh, for uh, the seventh generation. So I'm really here to really bring you greetings uh, to the crew of the uh, of the Golden Rule. Uh, we want to be part of the program, and we honor uh, Ellen and uh, Pat for really in, in inviting Greenpeace to be part of this. Uh, it's really honor to be here. I'm an I'm indigenous person myself. I'm from Nigeria, and uh, I came here, uh, you know, because you know. I love, you know, uh, justice. I'm, I'm a fighter for for peace and justice. So it's good to be here. I bring you greetings. Thank you for all you are doing. We couldn't do it with, by by ourselves. We rely on allies like you to do it. So thank you for all you do. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'd like to bring up Helen and the crew of the Golden Rule. Woo! Yeah. Hey! While we're here, Helen. Helen will speak on the mission of the Golden Rule and, uh, you know, the history of, of the ship and uh, the status of the crew and the calendar of events in Washington, which includes an event tonight at Bus Boys and Poets, 425 K Street Northwest, 6, 7, 8 o'clock tonight. So be great to see you there. Love you, Helen. Take it away. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Jan and Dick. Well, we certainly wouldn't be here at all if it wasn't for the people that came before us and the people that support us today. So Bigelow, Huntington, Willoughby, and Sherwood, 
the four men that originally sailed the Golden Rule in 1958 to stop nuclear weapons testing. The United States used 67 nuclear weapons in the Marshall Islands from 1946 to 1958, and the radiation that resulted from that was blowing all over the planet and was even ending up in mother's milk and cow's milk, and women were testing their milk for radiation before they'd feed it to their children. There was a worldwide effort to try to stop this atmospheric nuclear weapons testing. And eventually, after trying, appealing to Congress and the president and the people through letters to the editor and magazines and demonstrations on the street, they finally decided to do something different. So they got this little boat, the Golden Rule, and they sailed her right out towards the Marshall Islands with an intention to just get in the way of the testing. They made it to Honolulu, they resupplied, they were headed out, and the Coast Guard caught up with them and arrested them and brought them back to Honolulu for trial. They spent 60 days in jail. Another boat, the Phoenix of Hiroshima, captained by Dr. Earl Reynolds, who had spent three years in Hiroshima studying the effects of radiation on children, knew very well what this was all about. When he and his family were returning from a three-year trip around the world in his catch, similar to the Golden Rules, they came across them in Honolulu, two slips down in Alawai Harbor. They went to the trial. It was Earl Reynolds, his wife, Barbara, and their children, Jessica and Ted, and a Japanese crewman who had lost his brother in the bombing of Hiroshima. They decided they had no choice but to take the baton and do what the Golden Rule couldn't do, and sail, they did, into the testing zone in the Marshall Islands. Between the, the arrest of the two crews and the, the big explosion of support for getting rid of nuclear weapons, President Kennedy was able to sign the Limited Test Ban Treaty of 1963 just five years later. And that also, as he was referring to, sparked the founding of Greenpeace when two Quaker couples were sitting around in Vancouver, BC saying, what should we do about the nuclear, underground nuclear testing that's happening up in Alaska? And one of them said, why don't we do what the Golden Rule did and get a boat and sail it up there? And therefore, the, rain, the Rainbow Warrior wow. did that. Wow. Wow. So that's how we are connected, brother. So. All these years later, the Golden Rule was in terrible shape, floating around in Northern California in Humboldt Bay, and she sank in a gale, similar to the one we had a couple nights ago. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, we have great crew that know how to tie up a boat <laughs> in, on a fixed dock, you know. <laughs> So um, the Golden Rule was restored in 2010 to 2015 by Veterans for Peace and Quakers and other wooden boat lovers. Mostly volunteer labor went into and love went into the rebuilding of the boat. We sailed all up and down the west coast from Vancouver and Victoria, BC down to Ensenada, Mexico. Eventually when President Trump was threatening North Korea with destruction and they were threatening the United States in kind. We decided it was time to go into the Pacific again and put our lives in the way again to save the world from nuclear war. Well, we too made it to Honolulu. We sailed all around the Hawaiian Islands for two years and we were ready to go and sail onto the Marshall Islands and then further to Japan. It was March of 2020. No more public presentations. The country's all closed a pandemic had struck. So we ended up bringing the Golden Rule back to California and thought about what next. And 
we decided that since the vision of the people that rebuilt this boat for five years was to sail around all of the navigable waters of the United States, that we would take the golden rule around what's called the Great Loop. And that's down the center of the country on the inland waterways, around the tip of Florida, up the east coast, back in all around the Great Lakes, and then maybe, you know, cross your path, they say, uh, the loopers say. So we started in Minneapolis, and that's not even on the Great Loop. But we have a great Veterans for Peace chapter there that invited us, and we said, yeah, okay, I guess we could do that. We trucked her to Minneapolis. We went down the center of the country, around the tip of Florida, visited Cuba. Yay! Yo! And now we're headed up to Portland, Maine, via all these big cities of the Northeast. I can't believe all the people involved in organizing all of these events and all the crew that we need help from in the process. Yeah. <laughs> this is Jan's second time on with us on the Great Loop Voyage, but he was one of the first captains of the Golden Rule. We had two that day, headed out of Humboldt Bay down to um, San Diego, wow. and he chose to be first mate, but he's a great captain, and we love to have him here. Thank you. He came in an emergency situation. All of our crew got COVID, and so Jan just flew out from Chicago for the, for the weekend to help us move the boat further north. And then we have Dick Oaks. He also, he came by bus from Baltimore wow. to join us. And then we have, where's Ed? There we go, the, our videographer, Ed Mays. And he came out from Seattle to be our videographer for a couple of months. So we have a, a dynamic group of people that we can call on if we need to, to get this boat wherever it needs to go. I'm so happy about all the organizers, all the people that helped organize all these events in Washington, D.C. And, and, and Alexandria and, and Baltimore and Annapolis and everybody. Thank you so much for allowing us to use your land, the Piscataway land and other indigenous nations. And we're just, all I can express is gratitude. And maybe you two would like to say a few words um, about how you got involved or what you think about this whole project. Uh, I was on the Golden Rule in February and we were in Charleston, we went to a high school and I said, who used the biggest weapon of mass destruction ever? And none of the kids knew it. Oh. And so I feel like we still have our work to do. So I'm glad to be on the Golden Rule and um, uh, it's a great honor to be back and to be helping out and I'm glad we survived yesterday and over to you. Okay. I'm Dick Oaks. Uh, I was recruited because I knew how to sail, and uh, I'm very honored to be with uh, this project, uh, anti-nuclear project. So um, that's all I have to say. But thanks, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Yeah, buddy. We, uh, we wish the boat would have been here today, but we for 13 hours we fought four-foot seas, oh. high winds, cold weather rain and uh, we got here in body and in spirit but uh, the boat hopefully will be in Anacostia or Washington tomorrow or soon soon <laughs> we're gonna start sailing up that way again and so if you missed it today you'll you can have another opportunity to see I, the boat take a tour on the boat oh great Yay. yes Ironically, we ended up at the Quantico Marine Bases um, Marina t last night. <laughs> tell, they did the laundry. Oh, let, me tell, let me tell the story, okay? I, all my clothes were soaking wet. Shoes, everything, underwear, everything was soaking. This was soaking wet. I was cold. I have neuropathy. I couldn't feel my fingers. I couldn't feel my feet. So we got to the uh, Quantico. The fire department came, they took my vitals, and I was good, um, and uh, warmed up in the RV. But then, the fire department took all our wet laundry, washed it, dried it, folded it, oh. including <laughs> making the little sock balls like grandma used to do, okay? And um, they treated us uh, 
royally. Yeah. And so we're thankful nice. for that. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Awesome. Okay. Can, can I weave uh, Julie uh, Tyak Yates into this? She wanted to uh, present uh, you, Helen, with. Uh, with the gift for the boat. I would like to present this dream catcher and the history of the legend of the dream catchers on the back. Louder. And this comes from the St. Joseph's Indian School. And I would like to present this to you. Helen, maybe you can hang it up somewhere on the golden rule. Oh, we will. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank this you is all. so beautiful. And thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Julie. Uh, that concludes our program for today. And uh, oh, here you go. But I think Julie would be enthralled. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I've read this online, but thank you. This will be great.